Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. In tonight's video, I just want to talk about gold versus cryptocurrencies. And I think so many people in this space are blindly committed to one or the other. And for me, I own both. I'm a big believer that both deliver us from the government overreach, UK, okay? central banks that have lost control of monetary policy. And if you believe in financial freedom, I believe that you should also believe in both. And I'm going to talk about why. So we've started to read a few articles like this that gold is losing its safe haven status due to cryptocurrencies and monetary policy and investors are... Um, pull bullion from stocks as new Bitcoin and crypto other options appear but I believe the truth lies somewhere in the middle and you're going to hear people like Peter Schiff who did call the last financial crisis but he is calling Bitcoin a bubble and saying it's backed by nothing and then on the other side of that camp is people that saying that gold is a um, barbarous relic that has um, no place in the modern financial system so I'm a big believer in both and I'm going to talk about why and I'm going to talk about how we're starting to see projects like Digix that are tying together cryptocurrencies and blockchains with physically backed um, precious metals. So the reason I want to talk about this is that I believe gold is on the precipice of a multi-year rally, okay? And we've seen this long uptrend as Governments around the world continue to print money and devalue their currencies. And this is priced in US dollars, but gold has performed well in every single currency in the world, okay, over the, over the last few decades. So fiat money continues to lose its value against real world assets like, like gold. So this is a monthly chart, and we've had this downtrend line in place since we topped out at the end of 2011. And for the first time, we've had a big move through this downtrend line through 1300 and a monthly close. Okay, so I think this is the start of another long term uptrend, and that's the reason I own precious metals, good quality mining companies, as well as cryptocurrency. So here's a chart of you know 10 year performance of gold versus you know the major um, world currencies. So all of them up you know at least 50 percent if not a couple of hundred percent and even more so for us here in australia is we haven't even had this extreme monetary policy yet in australia but i think it's on, on the way okay australia is on the verge of en the longest of any country without a recession and if we enter that recession okay our government is going to do exactly what every other government around the world has done and that's lower interest rates and print money so this just shows that central banks will, will talk down gold and they'll talk themselves up and say they're in control, but behind the scenes, they're always net purchasers of gold. So they're going to go out in the media and, and tell you that gold has no place in the modern financial system, yet they'll be the ones that are stockpiling. And we've just seen huge demand, particularly from those eastern countries, China, Russia, okay, not so much from America, but those countries that are against the US dollar and believe that it shouldn't have so much power around the world. And you hear the petrodollar talked about in documentaries, and that's another subject for another time. But um, central banks are def definitely continuing to buy gold in huge amounts. So it was not that long ago, particularly here in Australia, where you could sit your money in a bank account and get a decent savings rate. Look at that, 15% back there in the 1990s and even as recently as you know 2008 there before the um, GFC, the global financial crisis, you know, 7% risk-free on your money in a savings account. So ever since then, we had the global financial crisis um, and central banks and governments did what they do best and that's Lower interest rates um, with the thinking that people won't sit their money in the bank, they'll go out and spend it and that will stimulate things. So at the same time, governments have gone out and printed money. And this is the usdebtclock.org if you haven't seen this before. But the US's national debt is about to tick over $20 trillion with a T. And I know Obama, when he took office, um, said he was going to halve it, but instead he doubled it. And this is just spiraling out of control. And there's no way that this can ever be paid back without governments continuing to print money, okay? They're never going to pay this back. This is all liabilities, and they can only pay it back by devaluing their currency. And 
they can't get interest rates back to normal levels, okay? Once, if interest rates were to go to 10%, okay, they owe, they owe a trillion dollars per year, okay? Two trillion per year, just in interest. So this is just, interest rates are gonna remain low forever, or governments are gonna continually print money and devalue their currencies forever, or both. So this is why cryptocurrency, Precious metals are going to continue to perform well. So here's just another example of unfunded liabilities, broken promises that governments are going to have to print money for. So this is the percentage of um, pension funds that are actually funded. Do they have the money to give you when you retire? And look at that. How many states have got above 90%? Not many. How many have got in the 30%? And this is just going to snowball, okay? What do you do when you retire and you get told you've got no money? Again, governments are going to have to print money to give to these people and devalue their currency more, which is going to drive up the price of precious metals and cryptocurrencies. So, Now, this is a similar story. Australia is one of the worst, but similar story throughout the developed world. Household debt to income ratios. People used to be able to afford a house and a car and a TV without you know, putting all these daily expenses on a credit card and look at you know this is not that long ago in the 90s when you know this was as high as people would dare have their their credit but now look at that approaching 200 percent and it's easy to do when your interest rates are getting lower and lower but once interest rates start to creep up as governments are talking about normalizing them this just puts people under so much pressure to make all their repayments and again it's just another sign that things are going to get messy and Precious metals and cryptocurrency are going to save you from being one of the sheep or one of the herd that gets blindsided by what's coming down the road. So here's a list of countries around the world that have negative interest rates. So taking interest rates to zero to stimulate spending was not enough. So now they, they're actually making you pay the bank money to hold your money. Now, why would you do that? No sane person is going to do that in a world where you can own cryptocurrency or gold. Why would you put your money into a savings account or give it to a government for a bond that has negative interest rates? This is just insanity, okay? So next thing I want to talk about here is the, the balance sheet of these central banks that are printing money. So this is only 2003 when every central bank around the world combined had less than $4 trillion in assets. Now, since that global financial crisis, they've really heated things up and Look at this now, you know, approaching $20 trillion. And we see craziness from people like the Swiss National Bank that own, you know, millions or billions of dollars of Apple stock. They're buying shares with this money they're printing out of thin air. How is that fair for the average person like you or I on the street that central banks and the Bank of Japan now own half the stock market in Japan? Oh, you know, I think it'd be great if we all had a printing press. We could print money out of thin air to buy stocks and whatever we wanted to, you know, drive up asset prices. This is again just craziness, and it's a matter of time till people with common sense start to buy real world assets, hard assets like gold, silver, um, and we've already seen that rush into cryptocurrencies to get out of the traditional financial system because the wheels are starting to fall off and. You know, it's like musical chairs. It only takes a few before that wave and nobody wants to be last to get out of these fiat monetary systems. So here's a dot plot graph of the Federal Reserve telling us that the interest rates are going to get back to normal and everything's going to be fine. And sure enough, in 2015, you know, they promised us that by now interest rates would be back up, you know, somewhere between 4% and 2%, but they just can't get them up, okay? Economies aren't recovering as fast as everyone had hoped for and, you know, this thought process that things are always going to get better and we're always going to grow at 3%. Maybe the world is not about growing at 3% forever. Maybe we need to start thinking sustainably. And the fact that we've got um, $20 trillion in debt, you just can't get interest rates up to those levels anymore and expect the economy to function normally. So this is all coming to Australia for my local viewers, okay? We're seeing it around the world, negative interest rates, okay? central banks printing money left, right, and center. So more and more reasons to own cryptocurrency. The Australian dollar is only going to fall as we approach and enter that recession in the coming years. That's going to drive up the price of crypto and Aussie dollars even more, just like it is for gold and precious metals, okay? I hope this presents to you why you should own both. Both still have a place in um, every investor's portfolio, in my opinion, and 
I think we need to work together and realize that by owning cryptocurrencies or gold, we're entering out of the traditional fiat money system that's controlled by governments and central banks and starting to develop that economy of our own peer-to-peer -peer economy. So I hope you guys have enjoyed that video a little bit different. If you have liked it, hit that like button. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video around. We really want to get this, this knowledge out there and free people's mind. And once you find out about crypto and financial freedom, you really do go down that rabbit hole and it is addictive. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll talk to you again soon. Cheers.